So um, I was going to talk about a medicine today for constipation and GI, all kinds of GI conditions, and it's a pretty powerful one. This is a very deep acting medicine. I love this medicine. I don't use it that often. I mean, it's certainly not like lycopodium or arsenicum or something like that because it's for a little deeper pathology, meaning someone who's really been suffering a long time and has had a lot of conditions related to the gastrointestinal tract, including ulcers, etc. But before I begin, I want to tell you about what happened to me tonight uh, because I want you to get a feel for how this works. Um, I ate, um, I've been doing intermittent fasting, and I've been doing that on and off for years, and so today I was a little hungry around 1, after not having eaten since last night around, I guess we ate around 6, and I, um, and I was getting a little hungry, and I wanted to not eat, so I have a tendency to do this. I um I always overdo things. I, I never do anything in a small way in my life. I mean it. I, I, everything I do wrong is really wrong. And so um, I ate some fat, some lard, pork lard, just a little bit. It wasn't going to be a lot. It was just a little bit. I had rendered it, and, and I knew that it would suppress my appetite and it would hold me till dinner. So I ate it, and I was still a little hungry, so I had a little more. And we're talking, I'm talking about a smidgen, you know, the size of a kidney bean. And so, um, boy, my glasses are still, need a little help here. And, um, and I was still hungry, and I didn't wait long enough, I don't think. <laughs> and I had a little more. And I would say that in about two hours, I was so nauseous. I felt so horrible. I didn't look at myself in the mirror, but I bet I was green. It was um, pretty intense. And um, so I said, oh, my gosh, I got to get past this. I got I to gotta get rid of this because I've got Facebook Live to do tonight, just a couple of hours. And, uh, and then I've got a class tonight. I think the class in, in our study group, one of our gateway to study groups, is I think 35 people in it. I've got to be on my game. So I went to my kit, and I have this old kit from the 1980s. I probably should have shown you. In fact, Perry, if you think of it, I'd love to have you bring it in here if you don't mind, honey. Um, and it's an old kit, and it's so old that some of the medicines were missing. And so I, I knew what medicine to use. See if anybody knows what medicine I should have used, okay? Hi, Donna from Missouri, and hi, Neely. <laughs> Cecilia from Kansas. See if you can figure out what medicine would this would would be a really good one for me after having too much fat, um, especially meat fat, and um, and then feeling nauseous. So I'm not going to tell you what it is yet. Let's see if people can come up with it, and then I will show you. No, it's the white kit. <laughs> well, it's not white anymore. This kit is so old, it's yellowed. <laughs> So um, I took it in a low potency because I had just kind of, here it is. This is my old kit. This is old. <laughs> I mean, really, this is old. So um, I'm going to say 1986 is when I bought it. So this is what it looks like. They don't sell these anymore, which is too bad. It was Highlands. There are only 29 remedies in it. It's kind of interesting to see it like that. But you see how I've changed things and, you know, some of them got labels and some are missing. You know, I've replaced with other bottles that we've used up and, so I grabbed this medicine, and I took it in a 6X, because that's all it was that I had in the box. So this was it. I don't want to tell you what it is. I'm not going to show you, but this was it. It was a 6X. And so I went and laid down for a little while. Oh, I wasn't doing it. It just, I mean, I felt slightly better. I was actually able to fall asleep for about 15 minutes. But it wasn't quite doing it. I was feel, still feeling pretty nauseous and green. And uh, let's see if anyone has any ideas. So I... Decided, no, I, I, I got, I've got to use it in the 30s. So I asked Perry, because I was so, just the thought of moving was really pretty uncomfortable. So I asked him if he would mind giving me this other kit and um, that had 30th potency in it. And so um, I took that instead, or on top of the six, after having taken the six a few hours earlier. And so... Um, I took it, and within, I don't know, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, I felt as right as rain. 
I couldn't believe the difference. Well, I mean, every time I see how homeopathy acts, I'm always astounded. Even though I do it all day long for the past 33 years, I've been doing this a long time. I've met with thousands of clients and even tens of thousands of students. And yet every time it always amazes me. So let's see if anyone can figure it out. Meanwhile, I'll go through some of these. Oh, pronounced. Oh, hi. Oh, what a great name for a town. Oh, hi. Spelled O-J-A-I, but pronounced oh, hi. Very nice. Hi, everyone. Okay, who's the first person? Marianne. Mary Ann Chope Sheldrake. Pulsatilla, my friend Marianne. You are on the mark. It's absolutely Pulsatilla. I could have used Nux Famica, someone said. Not a bad choice. Not a bad choice. Okay, here we go. Be positive mindset. Pulsatilla? Yes. Arsenicum says someone else. Not a bad choice. Nux Vomica. Pulsatilla says Heidi. It's Pulsatilla. Jackie says Pulsatilla. Look at these people. You are amazing. Jillian. Pulsatilla? <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Other people are saying Carbo Veg. Another person said Nux Vomica. More, more Nux Vomica. Arsenicum 30 or Nux Vomica says Kathy. Antimonium Crude. There, these are all very good choices, ladies. Nux Vomica. Nux Vomica. Mix. Nux vomica. <laughs> Chelidonium. You got a point there with that Chelidonium. Nux vomica, Nux vomica, Nux vomica. Carbo and Nux. Now, look, I'm not going to tell you. Linda said Pulsatilla. Tanya says Pulsatilla. You bet. Listen, I'm not going to tell you that Nux vomica would not have worked. So, and I want you to remember that because just because I use Pulsatilla and it worked for me doesn't mean it can't be anything else. It, I, you know, the very first medicine that I was ever given by a homeopath back in the late 80s. Was Nux Vomica 200? It did wonders for me. It eliminated about 50% of all the sufferings that I had had up until that time. So maybe Nux Vomica could have worked. But I use Pulsatilla, and I'll tell you why I use Pulsatilla. Because Pulsatilla, if you crack open your repertory, the very first thing you find when you look under uh, ailments or under you look under GI, nausea, stomach, nausea, and you look under nausea, or um, ailments from meat or fats, it's pulsatilla. Pulsatilla is all about fats. Bad from making, getting sick from eating ice cream, getting sick from eating um, gravies, getting sick from eating lard, <laughs> from too much coconut oil, but especially animal fats particularly animal fats good job look at you look at you charcoal well you know what charcoal's not a bad idea either the thing with charcoal is i think it would take a little bit longer but if it's the right medicine it really can work tobacco good point i love tobacco for nausea but the more we can get specific so we know that it was nausea okay so for nausea all everything everybody said is right i think every every one of those remedies is right but it was more than nausea. We had a bigger, we had a tighter picture than that. Nausea from eating fats. Okay, nausea from eating fats that are animal fats. That's how I tightened it up. I just happened to know that rubric, that it's nausea or any gut issue that is worse from eating fats and animal fats, and particularly when it's um, an acute. Now, pulsatilla is not a medicine that I use very much for myself. Um, I, it's never been something that's been useful for me. Uh, might have been useful for me as a young, you know, as an ingenue, but not at this age so much. But it's great for these aconitum. We're seeing ferrum fos. Pulsatilla asks Aaron. Yep, you bet. Absolutely. Um, and so pulsatilla for 30 for nausea, ailments from meats or fats or eating ice cream. Thank you very much, um, Nathalie. That's our Nathalie. Um, it's really Natalie, but she's got an H in her name, and so I tease her all the time and call her Nathalie. So um, hi, Adriana. <laughs> all these people that I know, it's wonderful to see everyone. Had lard with eggs for dinner tonight, yes. <laughs> yeah, that would, see, you were a lot smarter than I was, <laughs> Chris. Because you were smart enough to have the eggs with it. I had just lard. <laughs> so
So um, it's a great technique. I just overdid it. And I have had, I've used this technique in the past, and it really does work. It helps me cut down on my appetite before crying out loud, who's got an appetite when they're nauseous, right? But you're not supposed to go that far. <laughs> All right, let me take a sip of water. I want to say hi to my mighties. Howdy, mighty members. Um, you should be able to, I don't know if we're doing this yet. I, we're setting it up so that my mighty members who can watch me from that forum, actually from my site instead of through Facebook, I will be able to answer their questions soon. We're working on the technology on that. Um, oh, here we go. Marianne says, I use pulsatilla after rich food, which doesn't agree with me. Yeah, rich, meaning, you know, fatty. Yes, absolutely. Hi, Joe and gang, sending a big virtual hug. That's from uh, Lisa. Nice to see you. This is great. Dawn, hi. All righty. So for those who are my mighty members, you're watching me from one forum. You can't ask questions. That's one of the problems. That's what we're trying to get past here. So I'll, I will have eventually, and maybe it won't be so eventual, maybe we will be able to, That my goal is to have the questions from mighty members on our forum and then the questions from Facebook Live, and I'll be able to answer both and say hello to both. So, all right, so tonight... We're going to talk about a remedy that is so incredible for gastrointestinal conditions. Dr. James Tyler Kent, and when you are um, at a loss as to what medicine to use and you need to go to a Materia Medica, uh, use Materia Medicas that you own, but if you don't have them or you want another one, go online. Dr. James Tyler Kent, K-E-N-T. He's a homeopath who died in the, I want to say, the early 50s. He was a medical physician, he was a physician and homeopath in Chicago. Now, I particularly liked his information uh, through the years when I was raising my kids because Chicago weather is so similar to Buffalo, where, we, where I was raising our children, um, that it really helped me in many ways because a lot of times the cold winds coming off the lake was the same cold winds coming off the same lake. Lake Michigan, Lake Ontario, Lake Erie, it was all pretty much the same. So... Um, it was helpful to me for those acute situations. So I like Dr. James Tyler Kent's Materia Medica. And in it, um, when you read this, he says, I believe I have the correct quote here, no other remedy is as powerful as this medicine for stomach cancer. So here's the medicine, everyone. It's hydrastis. H-Y-D-R-A-S. T-I-S, canadensis is the second word, canadensis, hydrastis canadensis, known as just simply hydrastis, um, it's golden seal, and we all know golden seal, for those of us who have uh, uh, used uh, botanicals through the years, we all know golden seal is a great medicine for um, aiding in situations such as infections and protecting against infections, etc., but we also know that golden seal is great for the gut. So I'm going to read from my Materia Medica. This is it, should you be ever be interested. My Materia Medica is a very cursory, very uh, simple Materia Medica, not anything like Dr. James Tyler Kent's. I have to, oh, here we go. Donna is a mighty member watching. <laughs> here we go, more mighty members, love it. Uh, Chrissy just joined our mighty members, love it, love it. So what I love about this medicine, it's, it's all about the stomach. It's for a, I love these old medical terms, torpid liver. So it's not just the stomach, it's the whole gastrointestinal tract. Torpid. Torpid's such a cool name. You can use it to describe people, too. Um, you could use it to describe, um, excuse me if, I'm, if I don't mean to be disparaging to anyone, but I kind of noticed that uh, millennials are torpid. <laughs> not all of them, of course, but they have a reputation for being torpid. And that means inactive. So the liver is inactive. The liver is not functioning properly. It's being, it's kind of sluggish. Um, you, it doesn't mean that you that it has to be <clears throat> um, that you that it's that you can palpate it and notice that it's ample or anything. But it could be that as well. So it's a gastritis. So gas, gastritis is itis means inflammation of, and gastro means of course the gastrointestinal tract. So it's it's inflammation of the gastrointestinal fat cannot eat vegetables or bread and 
I hate to tell you how many people I work with and I hear about and I learn about through my students and but especially my clients who cannot eat vegetables. And I talk about this all the time to folks. Be wary if someone in your family or someone you know is having trouble with with conditions and you've tried just about everything, watch out for those plants. I know it's there's a whole movement towards veganism and trust me, I did it. I was vegan for years. God forbid it was the worst diet on earth. <laughs> because in the vegan diet are oxalates. They're vegetables that have that have anti-nutrients, lectins, I wrote some down, salicylates, nightshades, aflatoxins, phytic acid. I can keep going. Um, there are a lot of anti-nutrients, and it doesn't mean that we shouldn't eat vegetables. Please don't get me wrong. This, that, that's not what it means. What it means is that some people can't eat vegetables. Some people are sensitive to them, and it's often people with leaky gut or gastritis, etc. So I don't want to get too deeply into this, but um, I, I, I don't find generally, you know, this is not across the board because we can't say anything across the board when it comes to human health, but I don't find that meat is as much of a problem as many vegetables or plant matters, such as legumes and grains and uh, tree nuts and... Um, and, and many uh, just garden variety vegetables. So, hydrastis, let's get back to that. There's a soreness in the stomach. Hydrastis is prepared from the fresh roots of the golden seal plant. This remedy is called for when the remedy picture includes postnasal drip that causes snoring, mucous membranes that produce thick, uh, uh, ropey, tough, viscous secretions it's also a great remedy if you notice a thick yellow nasal discharge so this is in addition so it's also a great sinus remedy you'll find it often in combination medicines that say boron or ohm um, cell or they they often have hydrastis in there when it comes to sinus conditions um okay it can also be discharge of the ears and there can be vaginal leucorrhea um, and there's a lot of corrosiveness. And that's a big part of this because, as we said, this is a great medicine for gastric ulcers, which is a type of corrosiveness. It can be indicated in rectal fistula or prolapse as well as gastric ulcers. Generally, there be, may be a sinking sort of hungry feeling. Now, look, everyone has a sinking hungry feeling, generally speaking, when they're hungry, but not when it's a pathology. I'm talking about something that's more pathological. A sense of the person is sinking. And it's a very uncomfortable feeling. Um, yet the person might be hungry, yet they're averse to food. So averse to food. This is for someone who has cachexia. Cachexia is someone who is um, wasting away from not eating or from eating but not able to eat enough. So um, this is also a very good remedy, and it's interesting that, that I want to point this out to you, for anorexia nervosa. And anorexia nervosa is often associated with low B vitamins. And that makes sense because if you have a gastrointestinal condition uh, and uh, you can't digest properly, you can't absorb, you can't uptake your B vitamins. It's also associated with a psychological issue of um, wanting to be thin and psychologically not seeing yourself for what you really are and that you're far too thin, and but yet you still want to lose weight. Again, I think that's a B vitamin deficiency, but we don't look into vitamins so much in homeopathy because we have, instead of guessing or, or theorizing, we use very hard core information. What is that hard core information? Symptoms. Symptoms never lie. They are right on the mark, unless they're side effects. Now, a side effect is a symptom that's caused by a drug that's different. But if we have the real symptoms in someone's body, those never lie. People don't lie e either when it comes to ill health. Um, all right, there's, a, there's an accompanied by great weakness. There's similar to the hungry with no desire for food. There may be stubborn constipation with no desire to defecate. However, there may also be loose and frequent stools that are soft and light colored. 
This is not what I would call generally an acute medicine. It doesn't mean we can never use it, but this is a medicine for dyspepsia. It's the old word from the turn of the last century that means um, gastric disturbances or um, abdominal disturbances, especially with indigestion, etc. So this is a gen. This is not for. I had indigestion tonight. Indigestion was just one of my symptoms. The worst was the nausea when I ate the lard. Um, <laughs> but it is something that is that is more for a more more sobering illness, something that lasts a longer period of time, that lasts months, years, etc. Um, chronic gastric ulcer I put in here as well. Um, and there's a lot of sinus issues. What I have found... When I deal with someone who needs this medicine, um, I usually don't see both. I don't usually see both the gastric and the sinus problems. We usually see the sinus problems are a little more acute and we can use them in that manner. But when it comes to gastric, it's usually a bigger deal. It's usually a chronic condition. Okay, really enjoying learning. Thank you for sharing all your wisdom, you bet. Um, hi, a newbie here. Hi, Laurie. Hi, uh, let's see, from a hernia? No, not from a hernia. Her well, let me put it this way. If there's gastritis and there are problems around the gastritis and the person happens to have a concomitant, um, um, a, a concomitant hernia, don't assume that the hernia is causing that. We can look at that possibility, but be careful with theory. If it is indeed proven, then you got it. But I, it, without it being absolutely proven, I would use something for the gastritis, perhaps, and something else for the, the uh, hernia. Okay, is it like sanguinaria? It's a little different than sanguinaria, Susan. It's, more, it's a very thick mucus. It's ulcerative of sorts. Um, okay, so what is the potency and what is the frequency, right? You want to know that. Everybody wants to know that. I have used this medicine in a six, uh, twice daily. I have used it in a 200. I've never used it in a 30 that I can recall. Maybe I have, but I don't recall. And so, uh, and whenever I use something that is generally for chronic not always again there i wish they were really hard and fast rules but um i would think more in terms of um using all right let me let me let me back off of that for a minute um i don't want to give you a hard and fast rule that i always use 200s for chronics because there are a lot of sixes that are great for chronics so if I was going to use a six, I might want to use it maybe a little more frequently, maybe three or four times in a day for a few days or for, for a few weeks. But if I was going to use it in a 200, it would be twice daily. For how long? The question always is for how long until it's no longer needed. And that's, I know, a very vague answer. But I do want you to understand that that is that question about for how long should this medicine be used is a question that needs to be answered with a little more in-depth understanding. That's case management. For those of you who have taken my classes, then you then I know that you understand this. So for chronic constipation, I might use it for chronic constipation, but it's not my first choice. It's not my first choice. For a little girl that gets diarrhea with fruit, it's a possibility. It's a possibility. I would use this for a more a, a deeper condition. Uh, let's see, Materia, Murphy's Materia Medica mentor, mentor, mentions cancer, breast of the breast, colon, and liver. This is a great cancer medicine. And I normally don't teach about cancer, but I, I mean, this is what Kent is saying, so I am going to um, uh, bow to his knowledge on that. Would you use this over Bovista? Um, they're, they have t Bovista and um, Hydrastis have different actions. Bovista is for actual food intolerances or allergies. Hydrastis is for the ulcers, the gastritis, that is not necessarily from food intolerances. That's not because you can't eat this or smell that or be exposed to this or that. So it's a little different. 
Um, is this good for chronic acid reflux and stomach aches every so often? Chronic is the key. I see this as a chronic medicine. Um, in that case, I would say for chronic acid reflux, it's probably closer. Stomach aches every w once in a while. Perhaps if one is treating the chronic condition, then we might have the benefit indeed of having the stomach aches that are only occasional um, um, diminish as well. Yes, I'm still talking about hydrastis. All righty, let's see what else, what other questions we have here. Stress-induced excess acid leading to ulcers in esophageal stricture. Yeah, it could be. It certainly could be. Yes. Um, let's see, good for, what would you use this? Would you use this for irritable bowel? I, yes, I think it could be used for irritable bowel if the irritable bowel has the conditions that are related to this. So how do you know that? So this is what you want to do. You want to go online, go to Dr. James Tyler Kent or check my material. Now my material medic is not, is not very deep. It's a cursory look. So you might want to go to a more in-depth Materia Medica and see if anything else that this person has is in that Materia Medica for that particular medicine. That's how I want you to always look at your medicines. For those of you who came on early and heard me talk about using pulsatilla for ailments, nausea especially from animal fats, um, I want you tonight to go to your Materia Medica and read pulsatilla. Because this is an opportunity. You've got a story, my story. That's why I like to share my stories. You've got a story. It'll be more memorable. You can picture me eating, foolishly eating too much lard, being green. It's not easy being green. <laughs> and lying on the sofa, waiting for something to work. <laughs> the Pulsatilla 6 didn't work. About an hour later, I took Pulsatilla 30, and that's what did it. I mean, instantly. For bloating, no, I don't think of this as a bloating medicine. Medicine, The potency I've talked about, we're almost done, right, Perry? Yeah, it's 628 or 828. Is this a lot like sanguinaria? Yeah, I, I, I answered that for Susan. Hi, another newbie. Wonderful. Welcome, newbies. Welcome. Um, really enjoying learning. Thank you for sharing. Okay, hydrastis. Okay. Just want to make sure I got everyone. I'm so thankful. I'm so thankful. I'm thankful too. I'm thankful for you. Cannot eat bread. Would that cover what wheat sensitivity or gluten intolerance? Marianne, it would cover that if all the other symptoms fit. So we're not looking for one symptom. We're not looking for, well, I can't eat wheat and I can't eat vegetables, so it must be hydrastis. Don't go there. You want to see gastritis. You want to see dyspepsia. You want to see perhaps torpid liver. doesn't have to have all of them, but you want to see a little more evidence. In other words, it have to, has to stand up in homeopathy court. You're going to prove your case to the jury. Um, all righty. I think I might have covered. You should hear this. I am just chiming in now, but sounds like a great topic. Oh, yep. <laughs> all right, let me go down to the bottom again. I was going up to the top. You mentioned snoring, and yes, 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 yes. Thank you for mentioning that. It's great for snoring because there's a lot of mucus, sinus issues. It's great for allergic reactions. Read, read this medicine, folks. When I teach this to you, I hope that what you're doing is going one step further. Always dig deeper. Homeopathy is a very complex, intense medicine. I try to make it and distill it down smaller, 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 tighter, 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 so that I can give it to you in a thumbnail sketch. But I do hope that before you start using anything, that you indeed read up on it. So I'm going to say good night. Good night, mighty members. <laughs> Watch for my new videos. I'm doing more videos. I'm, I'm kind of getting up to speed now doing more videos little snippets of my life and things of interest in Mighty Members. And then for those of you on Facebook Live, please share this with folks. I want everyone to know about homeopathy as best as we can get it out to them. So good night. God bless all of you. <laughs> Have a great week. Bye now.